Arduipod is known as being a versatile, trusted, open source platform. And for large UAVs, it is the firmware of choice many times by a variety of companies. However, in the hobby and commercial space, it also is known as being very complicated and not very intuitive to use. Today and in this series, we're gonna to try to break those barriers. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is how to flash it to low cost flight controllers, quick and easy. The first thing you need to know is you don't need to have a really expensive flight controller to flash Audrey Pilot. There's open source options, meaning the schematic drawings are out there, but most of the flight controllers that hobbyists and uh, industry will use is also closed source where the schematics of the flight controller are not published online. Just to get started in Audrey Pilot, you can see there's many closed source options that are cheap and inexpensive for either testing or to get familiar with it, as much as Flywoo, Holy Bro, iFlight, Mamba, Speedy B. T-Motor, a lot of flight controllers that you use in the hobby space have supported targets, specifically the Speedy B variant here. This is a very popular flight controller and many people have this and you can see it's a supported target in Arduino Pilot already. I will also drop this link down below and it's a step-by-step -step guide. What's a little tricky with this one is the first way to flash Arduino Pilot is, seems overly complicated. You actually need to browse down here to the simpler way to do it, which is downloading Arduino Pilot and just using the Betaflight or iNav firmware to flash it over. So depending on what variant of Arduino Pilot you want, we're gonna use Quadcopter in this example. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and that will take me to the online repository where I can either select beta or stable. Now, if you're using Arduino Pilot, I would think you'd wanna use stable. That's a big part of the Arduino Pilot ecosystem is that it's safe and stable. Not to say that the other firmwares that are out there are not, but nevertheless. So for our example today, I'm gonna to browse down to I have a Kakute H7. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And you have to pay attention, like there's a V2. You can see on your flight controller if it's a V2 or not. So I know I have a V1 version of it. So I'm gonna click that. And then all I need to do is click on this hex file here. And if I click that, which I already did, it will download uh, to my computer. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is plug in our flight controller, but have it in a DFU mode. Now, if you have a USB hub, I recommend plugging in with a cable that goes directly into your motherboard, not like from that into a USB hub. Sometimes it, your drivers don't work really well. In that configuration, just have a cable plugged directly into USB port that is directly into your laptop or motherboard on your desktop computer. Go ahead and press the bootloader button. You'll have to find that on there and then go ahead and plug it in and find it here. There we go. Now, once you have that downloaded, you will need to download either the Betaflight configurator or the iNav configurator. Betaflight does have an online variant of its configurator at apps.betaflight.com, but as of the recording of this video, it will not work to flash that hex file to the flight controller. You can download either of those configurators at these two websites right here. I will drop those links down below. When you do go to those links, just note, you're gonna be looking for assets here and in Betaflight, it's expanded. And then for our uh, iNav, you can see we have to expand that one here. And then you're gonna pick which one that you need to, to for your operating system, if you have a Mac or PC. You can see here in Betaflight, you have a portable variant of this. Or iNav as well, that is a portable release, honestly, really, because you're just gonna download the zip file, extract it, put it somewhere on your computer, and then just run the EXE from there. Um, beta flights, you, if you grab this portable one, same deal, just download it, extract the zip file, and then just run it. So you don't even have to install the firmware. If you do these install ones here, like the EXE or the MSI, then it will actually install, which for all intent and purpose kind of does the same thing. It just puts it in your program files folder, at least for a PC. So yeah, I would recommend grabbing the zip or this portable one right here. Now for our example, I'm going to use iNav and I'm going to go ahead and hit flash firmware here, and then I can go out and select my uh, hex file that I have here. So I'm going to pick that and then notice up here since I have the flight controller in DFU mode It says DFU if you are having issues with that and the DFU is not uh, Showing up there. I will drop a link down below where you can do some troubleshooting help on that Or you can just go to here to iNav. They use all the same drivers You're most likely going to be wanting to use this Zadeg program here and again see the link down below for some step-by-step -step help on that Generally, it should probably work. The biggest tip is don't use a USB hub. Have the plug that you're plugging in your flight controller with go directly into your computer, not a USB hub. If you do that, it should work with any modern Windows or Mac OS or stuff like that. Okay, back to here, selecting that hex file. And then all after we select the hex file, all we have to do is you can scroll down here a little bit and hit flash firmware. And then you can see it is going to erase 
the firmware that's on there and flash this. This is gonna take some time, so just let it sit. And don't worry, there's bootloader firmware, which was accessed by us pressing that button and plugging it in. And then there's flight controller firmware section. It's almost like two sections of the memory. So you're just flashing the flight controller part of it, the bootloader stuff you're not messing with. So you can always go back to Betaflight, iNav, whatever you want, or reflash. It's not like you're gonna brick your flight controller because we're not messing around with that bootloader side of it. We're just flashing the flight controller firmware portion. Like I said, just sit back and relax. This is gonna take a second for this to actually flash. Once it is done, you should see that the verification down below is successful and you should hear your computer make some noises because it's coming out of bootloader mode. Next thing you're gonna do is download Mission Planner. Again, links down below. But it is important to know that with Arger Pilot, you have various options for ground control stations or the configurator is what we would call them. And that's not typical if you're coming from the hobby space. Uh, for Betaflight, iNav, other firmwares, KISS, whatever, there's one configurator that you have. There's not multiple variants. For Arger Pilot, you can see we have Mission Planner. Uh, there is Q Ground Control. And then there's also this AM Planner. And you can see here that Mission Planner is essentially the one you want. Q Ground Control is if you have an Android device and you want it to you know, have it all plugged in so you're getting like telemetry data back. It's a little bit better. I've not I have a lot of experience with it, but it says a little bit better from here. I do recall, I thought Q Ground Station was actually a little better interface than Mission Planner, but check that out a little bit more. And nevertheless, uh, they're saying this is the most up-to-date one. And then this AM, I guess this is like the redheaded stepchild down here. So just recognize that there's multiple things that you can lose there, so don't let that confuse you. In this example, we're gonna get Mission Planner. You guessed it, link down below to grab Mission Planner. You can go right here and click Install Mission Planner, and then go ahead and click here to download the MSI file. When you click that, you may get this message where you actually have to um, go ahead and download that as a trusted source uh, because of Windows security things. So go ahead and do that, it is okay. Then you're gonna wanna double click on that and go ahead and install it. Mission Planner, install. Then we're gonna hit yes here for any of the security things for Windows. See, we get a device driver wizard. We're gonna go ahead and hit next on that as well. We're gonna trust that, hit install. Looks like it will put all kinds of little drivers in there that Mission Planner may need. Go ahead and fit finished on that. And then once we're done, we're gonna check our little box for launch Mission Planner. Then you will have an option here when you're installing it to add the Altitude Angel plugin. It's basically a safety. Uh, so as you're planning out missions, it bring in some data on where you can and cannot fly. It does have an account set up. So take a look at that specifics uh, and see if you want to add that plugin or not. Once it loads up, you should see a screen like this. What I would recommend though, is unplugging your flight controller and replugging it back in, just to make sure that it went out of bootloader mode for sure, and just let the drivers reset and all that kind of good stuff. And then after that is done, you should be able to just go up here and hit connect. And you should see right here, it will go ahead and auto detect which port and go ahead and connect that. How do you know it's actually working? Well, if you move your flight controller around and you start to see this HUD thing start moving around, you are communicating. So then you're in good shape. And with that, congratulations, you flashed Arger Pilot to your flight controller. So come back to the next video to check out Mission Planner step-by-step, step, or if I made the video already, I'll make a link to it right here. Thanks everybody, hope this helps. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them down below. See you on the next one.